is tut. Hello everybody and welcome back to TipTart and welcome to the final episode of Intro to Adobe XD. In the previous previous episodes, rather, um, we created this activity page here. We learned about shapes and texts and other things like that. And this time around, we're going to link all of this stuff together so that when you click things on the page, it links to certain places. What we need to do first, however, is copy this little tab over like so and paste it onto our artboard because that is how we access our menu. I'm going to just reduce the size of my analytics artboard like so, so that there's no scrolling on this page. Obviously when this had all the information on, we'd scroll and scroll and scroll until we had all of our analytics. For now, that's gonna do. Uh, and we're gonna talk about prototyping. So everything we've done so far has been inside of the design tab, okay? When you move to the prototype tab, you'll notice that your design options go away and you, over one of your artboards, probably the first one you made, there'll be this little home icon. What this means is that's where your prototype will start. If I hit play on my prototype, it starts from that page. If I select another artboard, excuse me, like the login artboard, for example, you can see a grayed out home button. I can tap that instead. And when I hit play, it's going to start from there. What I want from now is it to start from the dashboard like so. You can see that on my dashboard, when in prototype view, I also get some of these little odd connection lines. In design view, we don't see them. What this basically means is you can select elements on your artboard and you can say when this is interacted with, move to a different artboard. And it's quite simple to do. For example, when somebody presses this button, I want to move to this artboard here, which is an overlay. So if I click and drag on that option and release, a little window will pop up with some options for you. What triggers this transition? Is it tapping this icon? Is it if they drag this icon or is it if there's a voice command? I'm just going to do tap for now. And there's two actions you can choose from. Well, there's quite a few, but two main ones. Transition, and what that basically means is you're moving between pages of an app. Auto animate, which is the same thing, apart from it will do its best to make it look sleek. Um, so if there are similar elements, it won't anim animate them. But if there are different elements, then it will try and animate those. What I want is overlay for this one, because what I want this board to do is to appear on top of this board when you tap it. So if I choose overlay there, you'll notice you get this green box that basically means this is going to cause an overlay action. You can then choose the animation. Most of the time you're going to want dissolve. This time I want slide right. And what that does is when I tap this button, it will show this board as an overlay and it will slide in like so. If we then hit play, we can see that in action by clicking like so. Okay, really easy, really simple. You can see there are other elements on my artboard that I have linked, like this button here also drags out your menu and that does the same thing. It's just got a overlay option that slides in from the right. You can also choose things like duration, how long it takes to do so. Um, so I've got it easing out and it takes 0.3 seconds. Now, what we're going to do is link to our analytics page, okay? But we're going to do that in a few different ways. It's important when prototyping to make sure that you make every option to an, uh, animate to a page or an element available. For example, yes, selecting this icon here should and will move to our activity page. This time, however, it won't be an overlay. It will be a full transition because we're changing pages. I don't want it to slide right because that will look weird. What I want it to do is dissolve between those pages. If you tap preserve scroll position and this artboard was just as long, so if I make it just as long, like so, okay. If you tapped preserve control, uh, preserve scroll position when that was on, when I click this, the board would start from down here rather than starting at the top. That's useful if you're halfway down a page and you want to sort of add in an extra element. So what I did here, this works when a uh, user presses this milestone icon, it opens up this milestone option on the tracking. Now this board and this board are exactly the same. The only difference is this one has a milestone closed and this one has milestone open. So in prototype view here, you can see the, how complicated prototypes get if I select everything. You can see everything that's going on in this um, prototype. I said, when I click this milestone option here, auto animate to this other board and track milestone expand. So it's gonna, that's where it's gonna go to. So if I hit play with that artboard selected, you can see that if I've scrolled down, 
and I select this option, it maintains that scroll position. And you can see how auto animate tries its best to animate that. Okay, so it takes the notes section, it pushes it down the page rather than just dissolving it. Auto animate doesn't get it right most of the time. Um, it really depends how you build your options as well. Most of the time I just suggest dissolve because it doesn't really add anything. Auto animate doesn't make it any clearer to understand. Um, it just tries to make it look a bit better. And prototypes are all about functionality. Um, getting an understanding for how things are going to interact and talk to each other and making sure that your client and your users can understand the process of that. Sometimes animations help, most of the time they don't. For example then, let's select this one and we've got tap, transition to analytics and dissolve there. So now when we select this and we hit play and we scroll down and we think, oh, this is a lovely app, um, we can click that button and it moves to our page. Because we checked preserve scroll position, it scrolled halfway down the page. That's basically the only point that I wanted to make. So there is another thing here that you can see going on. When I scroll, some of my items go up and some of my items don't. For example, this looks really bad. I want this to stay at the top like it does on the dashboard page. On the dashboard, when I hit play, everything stays at the top. This doesn't, and it should. So that's a mistake. Oddly and annoyingly, this is all done under the design rather than the prototype panel. I can see why they made that choice. I don't agree with it. I'm going to select everything that I want to stay still on this page. And you can see that there's an option here for fixed position when scrolling. There's a line through it because some of these options are fixed and some of these options are not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of this and check it so that all positions stay fixed. Finally, what I'm going to do is right click these, choose arrange and bring to front. And that makes sure they're on the stop on the top of the stack so that when these scroll up, they'll scroll up underneath it. I'm going to do the same thing for this option down here. It's already fixed and it's already at the front. So now when I play my dashboard page, all that stuff stays in position. Okay, perfect. So let's start doing that for this page as well then. What prototyping options are we going to need? Well, when we click this, we want it to move here, which it does. When we click this, we want it to move here, which it does. Activity, this option here and this option here. I probably want them to link to my calendar first rather than my analytics page. So I'm not going to actually have them link there um, because this is a live project. I've got to do it properly. Um, what you can do is link that yourself if you want to. It doesn't really matter. So when somebody uh, selects this option, it's going to animate to this page. But this page at the moment doesn't scroll properly. You can notice that it all disappears away. So what we need to do is go back to design. We select everything on this top banner, like so, and we can choose fixed position when scrolling. We can then right click, arrange, bring to front. When we go back to our prototyping view, this should now work just fine. And you can see that it does. But this doesn't link to our menu, so we need to fix that. The best way I've found to make sure that all your prototypes are working correctly, so we're just going to choose tap, overlay, dissolve, is to do it page by page. So build all of your pages first, so your main sections, and then link them together. This illustrated is illustrated a bit better on this full prototype, like so. So you think that there's not going to be a lot of options, but then when you see, you can see how many different things are going to different places. There's also some other tweaks that you can do, like this bookmark overlay. So for example, on my feed page, I have lots of things that people can do. If they select this bookmark, you can see that it links to this saved option. And if they select this review, you can see that it links to this review option here. And it does that for each one of these blocks individually. Also, each one of these blocks, if you click them, they themselves will animate to an example overlay of a video or an example overlay of a news article or an example overlay of, I think that's pretty much it, news or videos. Um, some of these things, however, shouldn't stay on that new artboard when you select them. For example, in bookmarks, what I want them to do is I want this just to pop up for a moment to say that it's saved. Then eventually when they go to their menu, when they click the saved option on the menu, that's then just going to link to a saved page where all of their saved options are shown. OK, so you can actually choose to go back to another artboard after a period of time. So, for example, here I've got an option that says when they click this bookmark, tap uh, when they tap overlay uh, sorry when they tap this bookmark it will create an overlay that overlay is the bookmark page and it takes three seconds 0.3 seconds to get there however when this 
page is triggered, I can select the entire artboard and you can see here that there's an option for going back. OK, so if I select this, it's going to say after a period of time, which for me is 0.4 seconds, go back to the previous artboard. Now, you can set all sorts of things. You can say transition to another page to link on. But this is how you create really interesting actions. For example, if I show you my feed page from here and I click this, well done, you've saved it, but it takes you back to the same page. So that looks like it hasn't navigated away from the page, but in the prototype, it absolutely has. It's navigated away, it's then waited a period of time and navigated back. You can do other similar things like with the bookmark here, this creates an overlay, you can hit submit and it takes you back to the previous page. That's pretty much it. The only thing I haven't really explained is uh, this blurred background, which we'll just quickly talk about now before we close off this episode. You can see that uh, if I go to my design view, there is actually a box here behind these overlays. OK, and what I've done is I've just selected a background blur on that box. So I'll show you on my live example. When they go to a menu overlay in this live example, you can see if I hover very carefully underneath here on the design view, there should be a small um, background. When they are on the dashboard and they hit play and they click this, you can see that there's a blurred overlay. All that is, is inside of this here, I've got a little bit of a background rectangle that I've checked background blur on. So you draw a background like so, you choose background blur and you can choose the amount and the brightness and the opacity of that background blur um, and it will just blur out anything that's behind it. It really is that simple. So Adobe XD then, quite a lot of stuff to absorb, although it seems like a deceptively simple piece of software. What I really recommend is if you've got some kind of live project or a project that you want to take live, give it a go prototyping it and mocking it up inside of Adobe XD. You can see just from the sheer amount of connections here, the power that this has, the potential that this has as a purely amazing prototype mock-up tool. This should just scratch the surface. There is so much more to it. So please go out there, dive in, have a good time, see what you can create. And until then, keep creating and I'll see you all next time on TipTut and hopefully next time on a intermediate Adobe XD tutorial series. Let me know if you want that and I'll do my best to put it together for you. Thanks very much for watching everybody and I'll see you all next time. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks and tutorials. Thanks for watching.